So the takings clause is a very hot topic with constitutional law. This also comes up in the real property outline, but it really is the major crossover of con law. I don't ever want you to worry about a takings clause essay because before we even go into this approach, I want you to take a moment and get out February 2010 question, I believe it was question three, okay? Um, it may have been a different question, but go into Fe the February 2010 bar and look at the constitutional law takings clause question. Because if you know that question and you apply this approach to it, you'll be ready to go for the takings clause if it ever comes up. Now, the first thing that you want to take into consideration are your justiciability issues as always, standing, state action, ripeness as a major consideration here, as well as potentially mootness. So make sure you're always considering those initial justiciability issues. Now, the second consideration is what type of taking do you have? Whenever the government, and, and keep this in mind, the government may be trying to take somebody's property, but it, it could be in the form of another entity that's actually doing the taking, like a cable company or the water department, LADWP for instance, and that can be a takings clause issue as well. Quite recently, there was a fact pattern tested a few bars ago where a cable company left a cable box or was installing a cable box on somebody's property. That is an eminent domain issue. So be careful because it can be hard to spot, especially in a general question, and you need to know that the takings clause is at issue. So what's your rule of thumb? Whenever you see either a governmental entity or somebody working for on a local level or city level taking somebody's property or potentially putting something on the property like electric wires or a cable box, look and see if the takings clause is at issue because it probably is. So let's take out your approach and let's begin. Assuming that you've already gotten any justiciability issues out of the way, which you should, you're gonna make a heading the takings clause and you're gonna give a little intro rule. The US Constitution allows the government to take private land for public use if it pays just compensation via the Fifth Amendment. State governments are implicated via the 14th Amendment. Takings can be physical in nature if the government occupies the land or regulatory in nature if the government renders the land economically unviable. Now keep in mind that there's also a partial regulatory taking where there's a remainder that's left over, so the entire parcel is not taken. And that is the third type of taking we'll go into as well. In either occurrence, physical or regulatory or partial regulatory, the government must pay just compensation. So you have to be paid regardless um, of whatever type of taking it is. It just depends what the remedy and what that calculation is, depending on the type of taking that there is. And that's really what the call is going to ask. How much money is owed? They want you to identify, of course, first what type of taking you have, and then they do want you to do some calculations, unfortunately, based on what type of compensation should be paid. So make sure that you know the calculation based on the rules. So let's begin. The first type of taking is a physical taking. What is this? Physical takings occur when the government occupies part or all of a piece of land. Any physical occupation must, excuse me, makes the taking an official taking. If there is a taking and it's for public use, that's the key determination here, it's for public use, the government must pay just compensation. Temporary deprivations of the use of property are not takings if the government's actions are reasonable. So if it's temporary, that's, that may apply based on the facts. Make sure you give a good analysis there. Why was what the government did on a temporary basis, why was that reasonable or not? So look at both sides always. So we have a physical taking for public use. I want you to really establish the public use in a separate heading. Why was what the government did for the good of the public? What was the public going to use it for? And if there is a justification, then the government must pay just compensation. What is that? When the government takes private property, it must compensate whoever it took the property from. As measured, this is the calculation here for a physical taking, by the fair market value of the property 
or the value as stipulated by the parties. So the fair market value of the property before the taking, by the way. So if the taking made the value of the property less, then that's not your calculation. It's the fair market value before the taking occurred. So make a note of that and establish your just compensation. Last, vested rights, that does come up as a sub-issue. When the government, but and its individualized actions, specifically approved the development of the property, the owner has a vested right to develop it. The owner has a vested right to develop if it's specifically approved property by the government. So make sure you know this vested rights doctrine. It's a sub-issue that comes up. So we could have a physical taking. Next, a regulatory taking. Regulatory taking. So what is this and how does it differ from a physical taking? Regulatory takings occur when a government regulation removes the economic value from the property. No more economic value on that property. A per se regulatory taking removes all economic value of the property and leaves it no viable economic use, meaning you cannot make money off of that land anymore. So no economic viable use. There's a three-part test to determine if a regulatory taking has been issued, has occurred. So the first thing you're gonna do is I want you to establish it as a potential regulatory taking, give that general rule that I just read, and go into the three-part test. So the first thing you have to do is you have to determine the nature of the government action. The nature of the government action. If you turn the page, I want to go through the rule for that. If the government's action was intended to punish the property owner, it is more likely to be considered a regulatory taking versus compared to if there was some innocent, innocent alternate reason for the regulation, right? Why does the government want to take all of the economic value out of that property. If they're punishing the person, the landowner, it's probably a regulatory taking, okay? So first you're looking at the nature of the government action, establish that based on the facts. The first is investment-backed expectations. Investment-backed expectations. A reasonable level of investment in the property by the property owner will be considered as a factor to consider if it was a regulatory taking. So if the owner already have, has made some type of, right in here, the investment, okay, the investment back expectation, excuse me. Nature of government action is the first part of the test. Second part is this investment back. expectation and the third part is the level of diminution of value so if the owner has made type of investment in the property then it's more likely a regulatory taking okay third level of diminution of value this is your remedy the measurement is the loss to the owner not the gain to the taker the diminution in value is the fair market value to the owner which must be a reasonable amount it does not take into consideration how much the taker is currently receiving or will receive. So again, we have this fair market value calculation here. So to reiterate again, justiciability issues always, ripeness and mootness as major ones to consider. Do you have a physical taking? Is it for public use? Really go into that and give just compensation. Be on the lookout for a cross with the vested rights doctrine. You may have otherwise a regulatory taking, which removes all the economic value from the property. You go through this main two-part test and then you attach the remedy. The nature of the government action, investment-backed expectation of the owner, and the level of diminution of value is the fair market value. That is your calculation there. Now third, you have a partial regulatory taking. I want you to still go through the nature of the government action and the investment backed expectation. I want you to go through that these first two parts of a regulatory taking test. So you have the nature as the first part and the second is the investment, whether or not the owner had some type of investment in the property already. 
and then attach your own remedy, the different remedy for a partial regulatory taking. Now, what is a partial regulatory taking? Here is where there are, let's say there's 250 acres and the government is only taking five of those acres. So there's a remainder left, okay? There's a remainder as opposed to a regulatory where they're taking all the economic value. In a partial regulatory taking, they're only taking some. So there's a remainder, okay? That's the key um, distinguishing factor here. You still go through the nature of the government action and the investment, okay, if whether or not there was an investment from the owner. But of course, the remedy is going to be different because you're not taking all of the value out. The remedy is, and I want you to write this down, it's the difference between the fair market value, actually it's in your approach, but make sure you read it, the difference between the fair market value of the whole property before the taking and the fair market value of the remainder after the taking. So it's the difference between the FMV, the fair market value of the whole property before the taking, and the fair market value of the remainder after the taking. They may want you to do that calculation. If you're really not good at math, just give what the actual remedy calculation would be and say that that is what is going to be imposed. At the very least, you'll get at least partial credit for doing that. But they usually will give you some numbers in a takings essay and want you to do some sort of calculation, okay? So make sure that three, you attach the partial regulatory taking remedy. Okay, physical taking, regulatory taking, partial regulatory taking, Take into consideration the justiciability issues. Look to see if you have a general question or a specific question. In a general question or specific, you're really only going into the type of taking that you have. But remember something. In an essay, you could have two takings going on by the government. So maybe the cable company came and they installed a cable box on your property to benefit, let's say, the whole apartment building. But at the same time, there's also, I don't know, some type of um, other taking going on that really takes all the economic value out of the property. So you could have two taking types of takings going on at once, two different parcels of property. So you may have two takings approaches to go into in one essay. Now also keep in mind that the takings clause can cross over with a number of different areas. It usually is not an essay onto itself. In February 2010, the essay that I want you to look at, it was a full-blown takings essay. It was the only one that I really know of where they tested only the takings clause within that essay, so I want you to make sure you review it. Also take a look at where you can see how the takings clause has crossed over. Look at February 2002, question five, and also look at February 2005, question one. That's February 2002, question five, and February 2005, question one. And of course we know if the government is taking something away, look to see if there's maybe equal protection violations going on there. Is this within their state power? That could be the Dormant Commerce Clause could, could cross over here. There's a lot of different areas of con law that could cross over within the takings clause. We also could have real property crossovers here, but usually we see it within the realm of con law. Good luck and I wish you the best if you get a takings essay.